glass, which is quite daring to say it's a structural material because of its lack of redundancy. Glass is an elastic material. So when we think of elastic material, we can compare it with steel or timber where uh, we have uh, the possibility of yielding. So we can have plastic deformations and redistribution of tension. So in case we evaluate, we under-evaluate the loads, we can have uh, distribution in plastic domains and this way uh, we can ensure some redundancy to the structure. While glass is perfectly elastic, but with brittle unexpected failure. So uh, this is something we have to take into consideration when designing glass. This is uh, partially calibrated by the safety factors, but at the same time, when designing glass, there are a lot of failure scenarios. So actually we have to take in consideration that some elements fail and the other have to take the additional loads. And this is valid for even for very simple examples. So breaking one glass should not trigger the uh, failure of the entire facade. There is a guidance for European structural glass, which is available uh, for free on the internet. And I really recommend to get in depth with this glass part. It studies all the national uh, design codes regarding glass and also talks about what will be implemented in a future glass euro code. So it's very good if you study it, it's a free material, you just Google it and uh, you'll find more. So uh, glass as structural material, at the first glance, it's not a structural material due to the brittle behavior and it will fail to stress concentrator. This means that we cannot design a linear element and see where we have the biggest bending moment or the biggest tension from uh, axial force and bending moments because that is not necessarily the point where it will break. Usually it breaks along along the connection. So especially if we have uh, point uh, connections like spiders, that's the area that needs to be studied because this that is usually the where the cr cracks appear or the failure comes from. So connection the design is vital in glass. Also glass uh, is a bit unpredictable and uh, we will get to the chemical um, composition of it to understand why it behaves so. Uh, here's a, here is a study made by Institute of Structural Engineers in UK where uh, they analyzed 740 test results on 6 mm of annealed glass. And uh, they got very, very different results. So from 40 megapascals or Newton per square millimeter to 120. So this leads to quite high safety factors because we need to choose where we need to be in the safe area, but at the same time uh, have some economic margins. Another challenge when designing glass, and this is actually killing the hand calculation of glass, is the geometric nonlinear analysis. Uh, glass is very strong and we will see the properties of it. However, because of this, we can go with uh, deflections that exceed the thickness. So when we start analyzing structures that with deflections higher than the thicknesses, then we have to go for the large deflection theory, which is quite complicated to do by hand. And this is one reason why we chose uh, to develop under SIA, because SIA has uh, the possibility of doing a third order analysis, where it takes in consideration the geometrical nonlinear analysis. The problem is that if we go with linear analysis in some situation where we have big deflections, and this is a typical situation, especially in facades or big spans, uh, we get higher tensions than reality. We can get double the tension. We can get to 49 newtons per uh, square millimeters instead of 20. So if we perform a large deflection theory, we get larger deflections, but at the same time, the stress are closer to the real stresses. So simplified is, a bit over uh, 